uh, in the last two days uh, we had a lot of interesting speeches, uh, mainly regarding Indies, uh, game development and so on. Uh, so my speech will be really boring, it was just about the distribution, box shuffling around the Europe. Uh, I will uh, introduce myself a bit. Uh, so after uh, gaining some experiences in uh, electronic, uh, in uh, Vanco or Samsung Electronics, in 2012 I've joined uh, ABC Data. Uh, it's a company I'll be talking uh, a bit later. Uh, I joined 1st of uh, May and it was just uh, two weeks before the launch of the Diablo. And uh, <laughs> I was supposed to take uh, uh, care of all uh, the PR and marketing uh, for this game. So it was, uh, I survived, a couple of bruises, a bit burnt, but survived. And it gave me a lot of experiences <laughs> in that. Uh, this year, uh, from uh, March, uh, we got a, a contract for Electronic Arts 2. So I shifted uh, uh, to a new position for logistics, uh, product management and so on. Uh, and a couple more people joined uh, our company. So we finally formed the proper uh, gaming unit. So, uh, I divided uh, uh, my speech into four, uh, four points. Uh, the position and the role of the distributors in gaming industry, uh, relationship of the game and publishers, uh, it's quite cheeky sometimes, uh, development and tendency of game and game sales and gaming communities. So, ABC Data is a, uh, I will take it because there's a, a lot of distributors, maybe hundreds in uh, Europe, uh, around the world, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so I will talk about uh, one distributor I'm working currently for, and it's uh, ABC Data. Uh, the headquarters uh, for this IT distributor is in uh, Poland. It's not solely uh, just the IT distributors, uh, we are to, uh, only oh, gaming distributor. Main purpose is uh, IT. So sometimes it's uh, really difficult and uh, how to explain to your bosses that the gaming is a bit different. Just a little bit <laughs> from selling the laptops. Uh, the ABC data is now uh, present in seven states. Uh, we don't have the contract uh, for uh, all uh, our publishers uh, in all countries. As you can see, it's a bit differentiated. Uh, in Poland, there's just uh, Activision. In Czech Republic, we have all three uh, with uh, Electronic Arts and uh, CR Games. Slovakia, just two. Hungary, only two. Uh, this is uh, game publishers uh, often uh, divide their portfolio among uh, the distributors, uh, even on one, in one territory. So, for example, in Poland, uh, there is a uh, Activision is made uh, is done by ABC Data, but uh, the Blizzard is uh, done by a CD project, and usually is based on uh, like a long-term relationships from the past. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make sense at all, but uh, it works like that for years and years. Uh, so. Uh, there are uh, other three countries uh, where we don't have the contracts for the gaming distribu uh, distribution at all. And uh, maybe it will change in the future part. We will see about it. So, the position and role of the distributors in the uh, gaming industry. Uh, the main purpose of the distributors are, is just to push uh, all the goodies uh, all around the, uh, to the shops, to the gamers. And uh, from time to time, it's uh, very challenging because uh, usually you are very limited by time. Uh, because uh, publishers are um, really protecting the new titles. So they will give you so limited time to distribute it. So nobody can sell it like a before day one and so on. So it brings a lot of challenges. Uh, distributor. Uh, must ensure that the sales in uh, his uh, territory are as high as possible. So it, it usually works uh, that uh, we need to gather the data, uh, pre-orders. It helps us uh, really much. It helps then distributors to plan uh, the production and so on. But uh, sometimes it's, uh, you never know if it will be selling well or not. That's a question. So sometimes you end up with uh, half of the um, store 
still on stock. But uh, and sometimes you have nothing, like with the Diablo, which sold out like uh, within five hours, and there was like a, another two months nothing. So you can't be prepared for these. Uh, then marketing. Usually, marketing by publishers uh, is done uh, by themselves, uh, and uh, here we come. Uh, to one thing, and it's that uh, many subjects uh, on, in territory are asking uh, for money uh, for marketing purposes, but uh, we have to say no, because it's, uh, we can support just uh, sellers, like a retail, retail, yeah, sometimes we can spend some money somewhere else, but it's very limited and usually publishers take a care, uh, care about it for themselves. So all the like, uh, banners you see on the internet for Blizzard and so on, it's done by the Blizzard, even if it's uh, in the local language, not by us. Uh, midnight sales, interesting thing. Uh, it's expected for AAA titles all the time. Uh, and uh, e-tail, retail, yeah. In retail, you must place the banners uh, and uh, other POS materials. But uh, for the ETL it's a bit uh, different, but make it visible as possible to boost your sales. Because in the uh, whole gaming industry, you, your sales in first two weeks are the crucial. After that, uh, it drops uh, quite a lot. Uh, so, PR. Make it visible, game is launched, uh, put, uh, get it uh, into many media as possible and uh, they provide you uh, with uh, the copies of the game, usually. Uh, sometimes it comes a week later than the release itself, so that makes it a bit complicated. So, uh, contact the local media, uh, get the uh, feedback, reviews, uh, send it back to the publisher, uh, physical copies of, of the magazines, uh, just to prove that you've done your maximum, uh, and uh, it will help you in the future to get maybe bigger budget for the marketing, maybe not, but uh, you must prove that you did your work. And uh, in these publishers are very tough, and uh, everything is in the contracts and so on, and you must obey. Because otherwise, distributors, there's hundreds of them. So when you, you can't just say, no, we don't do it. It's not an option. Uh, for example, uh, I prepared uh, this map uh, to show you uh, how, is, uh, like a, um, how is it uh, f for the emerging markets, uh, which means uh, usually emerging markets are used by most of the publishers and uh, it's uh, contained usually from, from 15 to 20, 25 countries. And uh, in case of, uh, in case of uh, Blizzard, so Blizzard, is uh, for uh, Europe HQ for, for the Europe is uh, in Versailles in France, but the uh, team uh, which takes care uh, of uh, like the execution of the marketing and so on is based in Milano in Italy, and uh, for, so for uh, Blizzard and Activision is Italy like a uh, main country for the whole. Uh, uh, emerging markets area. Main warehouse uh, for, uh, is in Netherlands. So uh, suddenly you see that uh, even now there are a couple, um, couple nations involved already. Then it goes through, uh, through um, our main, main warehouses in Poland and so on. So suddenly you have five, six nationalities you, you must deal with and the French are oh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, uh, here you can see uh, like a, uh, what includes uh, the emerging markets for the blizzard itself. Uh, yeah, South Africa, why not? Emirates, interesting. And uh, suddenly you see that uh, even for them uh, it must be really complicated uh, because so, so different, uh, mm, different countries with uh, totally different experience, uh, with uh, 
uh, how to say, it, uh, d different sales of the platforms and so on. Uh, like a all the, uh, every market is uh, really dif different. And here comes uh, the distributors, which help uh, the publishers to sell their goods and uh, because they know the local market. And uh, for publishers, it's no nonsense to have a, like an office in every single country because it's uh, increased the um, spendings a lot. So why not to leave it on somebody else who get its cut, but it will take uh, for everything uh, from uh, to, uh, for you. So you just uh, don't have to care. So, uh, we are coming to the relationships. Uh, yeah, as I uh, told now, uh, it's mutually beneficial. Uh, distributor will get some revenue from it. It's not big, as everybody thinks. But, uh, and uh, for the publisher, it's work done, so they take care of it just uh, to the main warehouse, and since then, it's upon us. Money saver. It's quite cheeky because, uh, yeah, you have to uh, leave some money in, in the uh, to the distributors. So you are losing something uh, of the margin. But on the other hand, uh, usually uh, it's much more costly to be present on the market yourself than, uh, uh, than uh, uh, through the distributor. Oh, I told about it. Uh, and difference, uh, difference in approach uh, to um, various countries. Uh, in emerging markets, uh, for example, uh, Poland has, uh, is like a number one because it's the biggest market. So they, have, uh, they get uh, the biggest support, uh, biggest visibility. Uh, they have a couple more benefits from this. And, uh, so the uh, rest of the countries can uh, expect the same uh, conditions. Oh. You are too small, will you get localization? No. And uh, it's a big pain uh, for distributors like, uh, yeah, sell this game. It's selling lovely in this country, but they have localized it. And suddenly the sales goes up. And if you ask about the localization, not a possibility. Okay, for Blizzard, Activision, okay. So costly for uh, for such a small country. So no, they would uh, not approve it. But it limits then your sales. And uh, other thing is that uh, because of the European Union, you suddenly every or like an end seller can buy it anywhere in the Europe in the English version. So uh, for you, it's like a and it's endangerous uh, endangering uh, distributors from country to to country because you suddenly get it from somewhere else. Uh, it's, sometimes it's a big problem. Publishers are trying to fight it, like uh, tracking uh, the goods and so on. But uh, mostly it's, it's uh, really costly and uh, inefficient. Then. Development and tendencies in game sales. Uh, physical copies uh, versus download. Uh, I would like to say that it's like uh, with books and uh, e-books. You get something physical on one hand, in one hand, and uh, you can simply download something and you can store it easily. But uh, what are the advantages? There are disadvantages in this. Uh, so for the physical copies, uh, you don't have to download all the data. Yeah, it's questionable because the final build is done like a month uh, when it goes to the uh, month before the launch when it goes to the production. So. Suddenly, you did a lot of uh, improvements and so on, and suddenly that patch has uh, like uh, eight gigs. It's it's quite a big. So suddenly you have uh, like a uh, twelve gigs uh, on the DVDs, and then even then nearly the same amount of the data you have to download just to patch it. And uh, for the bias, like for me, when I uh, I love physical books. The smell of it, everything. And uh, when you go uh, to the shop and uh, suddenly you bring home s something uh, in a physical form, uh, I think you much more appreciate it. Because 
uh, many studies were done on uh, like uh, how much, how many games uh, people have uh, on the Steam account. Do they play it? That, that's a question. If you have like uh, 300 games, you played 20 of them. Because, yeah, it's there. It's just a piece of text. And, uh, but if you have it uh, on your shelf, and like, ah, uh, uh, going about it uh, every day, and just, uh, yeah, I will play it now. Uh, yeah, I talked about the updates. Here comes the uh, collector's editions. Uh, sometimes, uh, People are really crazy about these things. Uh, you have um, many people, maybe even between you, who are collectors of the collector's editions. Uh, because people like it. It's something extra, it's limited, or one, uh, only during the launch, and that's it. No more, uh, you can't get it later, only on eBay and so on. So uh, these are, um, when we are launching the game, uh, we want as, uh, as much, uh, as many, uh, uh, collector's editions as we can, but usually it's strictly limited country by country. And uh, yeah, you can get like a tenth more, maybe, if you behaved well. But uh, usually uh, it's uh, just a couple hundred copies. Uh, regarding download, uh, yeah, it's comfortable. Just you can do it from anywhere, mostly. But it's based on the internet connection. And uh, here we come. Uh, if you live in a big city and um, you have a perfect um, co uh, internet connection with like a no limit uh, download and so on, not a problem for you. But if you live on, uh, in some uh, small city with uh, crappy connection, suddenly that physical copy for you is worth it. Yeah, uh, lately it must be connected all the time to the internet and so on. So it, it's getting uh, really difficult for these people. And we have uh, sometimes complaints like, uh, I can't play it like uh, because of this, this, this. And people are trying to uh, solve it. But, uh, and uh, here we go. Uh, when you have a new game, it can have uh, like uh, 15, 20 gigs. And if you have like uh, some limit and you spend it on one game, you are done for the month. And it's not just a question of uh, uh, Central or Eastern Europe, but uh, even uh, US and so on. So, here you go again. Uh, and technical issues with the servers. <laughs> uh, it's uh, all the time the same story. Uh, like a, now we can uh, usually like pre-download before the launch uh, the game, but then it's patched again. So, um, when you have this physical copy, you can install it. Not a problem with that. But usually you have to patch it then. And, uh, but you don't have to download all the data uh, during the launch when, when the servers are so busy. Gaming communities and gaming events. Uh, usually uh, for, it's done by the publishers themselves, like a presence uh, like in the Gamescom and so on. But uh, there's uh, like loads of uh, local um, gaming events too. And uh, people organizing this uh, are contacting uh, us as a distributor uh, ev really every day. Like, uh, we would like to get some support. We would like, uh, if you can sponsor us and, and so on. And uh, you have to say mostly no, because you don't have budgets from publisher uh, for this. And uh, with the bigger uh, expos, uh, like is uh, four games, uh, which uh, was in Prague uh, two weeks ago, uh, it was, we asked Blizzard, can we show this, well, uh, like a new World of Warcraft? Mm, sorry, uh, developers must be present then, and they are so busy. And even, and even uh, Paris is a small town for this event. So it's like, a, yeah, we would like to, but uh, then uh, like a, uh, for distributor, to be on this event, is it uh, really necessary? Will it uh, boost your sales of the game, which is coming like uh, within one month, and you can't show it? No. So nobody uh, like, uh, will approve the uh, money to be spent uh, on this expo. It's really pity, but uh, if the publishers are saying no, like, nobody will do anything about it. 
So, support before lunch. Uh, it's a quite nice work. Uh, I remember last year uh, when I had uh, like a file with 5,000 uh, keys uh, for Headstone. And it was like a, hmm, it's quite nice. <laughs> and uh, then you can use it, uh, promote you, uh, your company, uh, promote uh, like a final sellers uh, through the media, and uh, like and for the headstone, it was a really really successful in this because that the closed beta took like a half a year and everybody wanted to get in, so uh, it, it gained visibility so rapidly and uh, with like a no cost in no time, it was perfect. We expect the same with uh, Heroes of the Storm uh, next year too. Gaming events, uh, goodies prizes. Uh, as I was talking about this, uh, like a programming event, yeah, we can provide something, we can ask publisher, but it depends. Uh, usually people who are organizing uh, these type of events, like uh, they will ask one month before the event, can you provide us something? But for the publisher, it's like a two, three months planning if what they can spend there, if they will send something. So. Uh, mostly, it's like a no time there uh, to provide something. And uh, yeah, gaming expose. Okay, that's everything from my side. Uh, if you have uh, any questions.